Hey guys, a lot of people have been asking, um, can the Radical Rocket carry stuff? Can it carry cameras? Can it carry a load? Can it carry a package? Um, unfortunately, we've got this huge 120 millimeter fan in the middle and all of the other stuff is um, evenly around the outside of the fan so that it can fly nice and stable. So I've been giving this some thought and I've been thinking, how can it carry stuff? So what I've come up with is uh, we've got the Radical Rocket Okay, which is kind of like this. All right, and we've got our we've got our fan is inside there, and this is our inlet ring. Okay, so what I've come up with is what we need to do. We need to keep whatever it is we're carrying um, in the centre of lift, centre of gravity. Okay, which is in the middle. Um, we can't put it underneath because obviously we've got that airflow and anything that gets in the way of that airflow that's attached to the rocket, it's gonna, it's gonna um, be a drag and it's gonna reduce the lift, right? So what I figured we'd do is put a pod up above the Radical Rockets fan so that we can still allow the air to flow around and through into the fan. So what we need is some legs which attach to the radical rocket and the pod, okay, but still allow the air to flow through. So this is what I've come up with. So I've 3D printed, designed and 3D printed those little um, legs which are aerodynamic, they're shaped like little wings, okay? So they will sit just on the inlet ring all the way around and support the payload system, um, which I'm going to make using a vac form plastic with like a, like an airframe inside, a lightweight airframe. Um, and then it'd be clear and we can carry all sorts of stuff, pretty much anything we want. So it's up out of the airflow and we can basically have as much volume as we want. So when I made the molds for the inlet ring and for the, the side panels, I used a subtractive manufacturing process, which is 3D, uh, which is milling with a CNC machine. It's subtractive because it removes what you don't want. So you start off with a huge block and you take away what you don't want and you're left with basically what's left. And the problem with that, it's incredibly wasteful because you can't use what you've milled. It's just dust, it's, it's gone, it's shavings, it's dust, it's lost, incredibly wasteful. So what you want to use ideally is an, is an additive manufacturing process like 3D printing. So I thought as it's a dome, it's quite strong, I'll 3D print the mould and see how I get on with that. So I 3D printed the mould and I managed to make one vac formed uh, nose cone, we'll call them nose cone, shall we? Uh, it came out really, really well. Um, it's a little bit steppy because the 3D prints are like that. Um, and then I tried to do the second one, and unfortunately, um, I managed to break the mould, uh, collapsed. So I've only got one, which I think is a big problem because I've got to print another one of these and it took about 15 hours. However, I bought this stuff, um, which is like a casting cement for making garden ornaments and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with that cement um, and then take it out and then what I'm left with, I'm going to sand down um, uh, the mould, we'll call it, get rid of all of these, um, all of these lines, all of these bumps. Um, and then I'll use that as another mould to make as many as I need. And then for the sides, I'm just going to get the sheet and just wrap it around, uh, make like a cylinder and then put holes in it and, and, and uh, fix it together with, um, with snap rivets like I've done with a lot of the other things on the Radical Rocket. Right, so let's get mixing. Okay, stone cast powder. Add one kilogram of powder to 500 mils of water. Always add powder to water only. Mix thoroughly to creamy paste. Using less water makes powder harder, more water softer. Mixture will be workable for about 10 minutes. Sets in about 20 minutes from mixing. Okay. Right.
So I've mixed it up, I've poured it in, I've got to wait 20 minutes, um, see how it comes out. Hopefully it's going to be hard enough to use as a mould, we'll soon find out. It's really really hot so I think it's still going off super warm I think I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it in there till it cools off and then I'll know that the um, chemical reactions all done with well the temperature is actually going up which is not what I was expecting uh, one hour and 15 minutes later um, and it's cooling down So three hours later, we've got a nice vac form mould for our nose combs. Um, it's looking really smooth. It might need possibly a little bit more filling and a bit more sanding, um, but we'll pop it in the vac former, um, see how they come out. Here we go. Yeah, so they came out really well. I've got a couple of good nose cones there, so I'm going to make a cylinder to go between them, um, see if I can make a payload bay. So we now have a super lightweight and very strong payload bay for the Radical Rocket. All that's left to do is attach the support legs underneath, fit that to the inlet ring. In my next video, I'm going to be uh, test flying it, putting things inside and seeing how that affects the flight characteristics. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.